back to the Value Driven Investor Podcast, where we forge value-driven investors on a mission to live life on their terms. No matter where you have come from or where you are going, becoming a value-driven investor is in all our best interests because becoming financially free allows us to focus on what matters most, fulfilling our purpose. Our community of value-driven investors is committed to showing you the way. With the support of this community, you are sure to reach your goals. For all of us in the value-driven investor community, there is no greater gift than the gift of giving. Because together, anything is possible. We're back for another episode of the Value Driven Investor Podcast, and I'm excited to be talking to you guys today because there's some crazy stuff going on in my life. Uh, when it comes to real estate investing, I have pulled the trigger on some of the biggest projects I think I will ever do. One being <clears throat> potentially a $1.7 to $2 million build that I'm literally going to build a house into a hill. Yeah, I feel like I'm almost in California. And it was it's exciting because uh, the last couple of days I've been working on this project. I talked to my designer, uh, Annie, who's fantastic. And I'm hoping I'm to have her on um, the podcast. She's an interior designer that I work with. And we were talking about like, what are we going to do? How do you, because when you build a $2 million house, which is definitely on the upper end in my market, you have to have, it has to be one of a kind. It has to be like, a staple. It has to be that trophy that when they, when your customer or the or the homeowner buys that property, it's a trophy. Like they want to show it off. And so it was cool yesterday because I got to talk with her about the interior design and kind of like where we want to go and how can we be different than what everybody else is doing, but yet still hit that nerve for that perfect buyer at that price point. Well, then today. I came to the conclusion that, you know, I've been a, the guy that's designing the exterior, the which we call in the building industry, the elevations. I've been the one putting together the elevations on most of the houses. And like this last house that we did for 1.4, I basically designed the, the exterior elevation with the help of my draftsman. But he's not necessarily a, 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 like an artist. He's more of the guy that really knows how to put the sticks together so the house doesn't found, fall down. <laughs> Um, when it comes to kind of like the the design and the, and the um, the look and feel, I'm I take more of the role of that. Well, there's a point that I've come to realize when I hit when I designed that 1.4 million dollar house, it it turned out fantastic. But I put a ton of time and effort and and it really like it wasn't my strength and I knew it. It turned out great and we've gotten tons of compliments. But now all of a sudden I'm going to do this project over on Ewing Avenue for call 1.7 to 2 million bucks. And I'm just like, Tim, self-awareness is the key to success as an investor. You have to be self-aware enough to know that you are not an artist. Designing an elevation on a $2 million house potentially, that has to be sophisticated. It has to be uh, unique. It has to have like one, truly one of a kind touches. It's like, it's like designing a, a, uh, Lamborghini or like, um, you know, these amazing sports cars that come out. If, if you don't have that, like just super cool factor or that one off factor, like on a, I think it's called a Maybach or like a Rolls Royce or something like that. Those, those cars are so definitive from your Lexuses, your BMWs, your Audis, your, you know, higher end car, like what most of us call luxury, but then all of a sudden you go to these cars that very few of us can even afford. And that's when they have designers, they pay a ton of money to because the look and feel and the emotion that those high end sports cars or those luxury cars or anything luxury like a $2 million house, it has to instill emotion. And that's what's got me so excited because I think I found someone great to work with and it's going to be awesome. And, and this is the part of building and, and investing that I love is the transformation. I love just the, uh, the thought of like, man, dude, I'm going to be a part of a $2 million build. That's going to sit in that location for the next hundred years. And I can drive by it. My kids can drive by it. And it's going to be like, dad, you really were a part of that. Cool. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm going to share that journey with you guys. Um, Grando, 
you're with us today. It's always awesome to have yeah. you on the show, man. What have you been up to and what are you doing? Because I know you got big things going. You always have big things going. Yeah, uh, busiest, busiest uh, year of our lives. My brother and I are just stacking stuff deep, you know, and uh, one of the things that I've been working on is trying to get our next office space. Uh, we've been slowly looking over the last year, like, where could we go? Kind of a quasi office space, you know, uh, kind of retail with a little bit of storage and stuff in it. And so we locked one up um recently where we're in the final That's phases awesome. of locking it up so we're super excited it's right in the first uh, 30 blocks of town and kind of in our core area and me i'm kind of like you looking to the future thinking you know in 10 years you know where will the city be and what will have been built around this and this location so key for us because it's so close in and it'll be a big deal for us we got an amazing buy on it it's an 1800 square foot um office space that we're going to be able to, it's kind of been used kind of as kind of a hybrid space and we're going to convert it into a complete, nice, beautiful office space, you know, over the next year as we get it. So we've just been slow walking this process. It's really exciting for us because we never thought, you know, yesterday we were talking, we never thought we would already be in a spot inside of just a few years, you know, taking it from being real estate agent, real estate investors to let's just buy our own office space. Why pay rent anymore? Like you're building your brand, literally you're building your yeah. brand and your presence in your city. Like yeah. that gives you legit factor. Like now all of a sudden, you know, grand real estate investments has some very yeah. legit credibility because they, they have a presence in their own city. It's not, you know, you're not, it's not a, it's not a guy working out of his house. Right. Which, yeah. which, I think a lot of people, I mean, and it's counterintuitive, right? Because 2020 hit, COVID hit, and everybody's like, well, I'm leaving the office and I'm going to work out of my house where yeah. you're doing the opposite. And tell me, you've thought about that because Bob yeah. Grant, if there's one thing you got to know about Bob Grant, save money. <laughs> he always goes against the grain. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I found out about myself, like I don't work good without people. I'm like a person that needs to see people and do stuff like that. You know, like if, if you don't have my attention, you, it's tough to get me. So the office space is the space for me, but I do need my own closed door so I can kind of work on stuff and, and be there. So that's why, you know, my, and my brother's kind of the same way. Like we, our best ideas and stuff come when we're together and we're sitting there in the same space. But if we were both working from home, yeah, we talk, we communicate on the phone, but we're not using a whiteboard. We're not strategizing. We're not doing that type of stuff. And so for me, I mean, I guess everybody's different. I, I wonder how big tech companies are really efficient with all these people working all over the place. And I know they pull people in, but I love it when I go into an office every day and I can be talking to people and going back and forth and figuring things out and just brainstorming and stuff. That's where I get my energy. And so that's what I knew about myself. And I feel like my brother's the same way. So we tell us a little bit about this deal though, Grando, because you said, yeah. you, you know what, Murph, I think I got this for a really good price. Cause again, we're, this is real yeah. estate investing, right? How, what, how do you think you got it for a good price? Give us a little scoop on like the deal and, and its valuation and where you think it's going to be. And you know, you yeah. didn't just buy a building and overpay for it and then move right. your company into it. Like you thought about this. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's hard to find even commercial real estate. I thought with COVID and all these people in the commercial world going out of business and stuff that, you know, price was prices would really recess, you know, and go backwards in the commercial world or even just fall off a cliff. But right. it hasn't happened yet. You know, and I was like, well, it hasn't happened. Now I'm seeing people, new businesses fill up these spaces. And I was just kind of like waiting, waiting, looking, looking to find a good deal. And this deal I actually found on Craigslist, you know, it's kind of a <laughs> DIY guy. Awesome. No kidding. I know. So I was like, this guy like just is doing it, you know, trying to sell it himself because he's trying to retire out of his business, trying to, you know, for sell by owner his house and, you know, for sell by owner his office or his, his retail building. And then he's trying to sell with a with some sort of a real estate agent or something, his the actual componentries of his business, you know, the products and stuff and to pass that off. And, you know, finally, you know, so I just see it and I look at it. I mean, Could this be true? Like, no way is they're an office building for, you know, he wanted like uh, just over 500,000 for us. Like even at that price, I was like, that's a pretty good deal. Like I can't even pay for the mortgage there. Like in the price I'd have to pay each month, like I can't lease anything for that cost. And he even said on the thing, why lease a building when you could own your own building? I was like, that's a pretty good headline. I'll call you up, you know? And so then, you know, I just kind of slow walked it with the guy and just kept talking to him, trying to understand what he wanted and everything. You know how it goes. You're just trying to feel it out and see, What's the catch here? You know, who is he? And then finally I made the offer and just said, you know, here's what I feel I can pay you, which is 475,000. And 
he was like, yeah, that sounds great to me. And all the stuff He's even leaving a 15 foot storage container in the back for me. So I can nice. store all sorts of construction stuff, That's you know, awesome. like, this will be awesome. So, but yeah. And so then in the end, you know, my, you know, I thought it would probably be worth, you know, in the 600s, but they're also, you know, it's the core of the city. They're replacing the whole street through that area. They want to make it way more walkable. Right now it's been kind of a two lane busy street and then it kind of dives off into a one lane direction. But they're like, hey, we want this whole city and these core streets to be walkable. So they're replacing the whole road, tightening up the road, making the paths, you know, all the street uh, sidewalks really big. And they're putting in, you know, uh, crosswalk kind of like these light things where you press the button, you can walk across really fast and stuff and nice new lights. So the whole front of this building right now in the front of it, the sidewalk and everything's gone. You can't even pull into it because the city's got it all gutted. I'm like, this is going to be amazing. So is like, he covering the, the taxes or are you going to cover the, the city assessment? covered it. Um, there's no fees associated with the businesses on this one because it's such an important part of their city That's awesome. that they're planning for the future. And they're like, we've got to do this in this area. And it's been going on for like five years, you know, that they've been planning this giant, massive renovation to that section of the city because there's downtown. And then just a little bit out of it, that's, I kind of call it midtown, you know, because it's in the 20 blocks, you know, and, and downtown's probably the first. 15 blocks is downtown. So it's kind of midtown is where it's at. And that's kind of their push for the new portion of the city, you know, that they're trying to renovate and kind of get going. And so nice that one. So we that's think awesome, my brother was thinking if we were to clean this up, make it an amazing office space, you know, just a beautiful space, uh, he's thinking, you know, 750, 800 K or maybe more, you know, who knows in a few more years as the rest of that area gets up. But I mean, when I say like, it's not even a horrible area. It's it's better than the location I'm at now, which is five blocks away, which is closer to right. downtown. It's right. a better location. And right. there's like Starbucks next to it. There's, you know, like a brewery right next to it. There's all this nice stuff awesome. up there. And I'm just like, this is too good to be true. And that's what I keep being like, this is too good to be true. <laughs> you know, but, but <laughs> no, man, you're just in the right place at the right yeah. time. Yeah. It's, and, and it's, it's that and uh, just being willing to take that risk, which is what we're going to talk about today. Do exactly, exactly. Everything. And that's the perfect yeah. segue is, is today we're talking about stuck, stuck. stuck. <laughs> yeah. Like, why are you not jumping? Right. You're yeah. stuck and you feel like your feet are in quicksand or your feet are in cement and you're stuck. And I get it. You know, I get it. You want to become a value driven investor, but you're still stuck. You've listened to the 14, 15 episodes, however many episodes we've had already. And you're like, man, I love all this information. I love where these guys are going. I want to do this. I want life on my terms. I want to become my best self. I want to do all these things. I hate where my job is. I, I, I want change. But then you're like, but how do I make it happen? Like, and then the question you need to be asking yourself at this point, and you have to be honest with yourself because authentic self-awareness is the holy grail of becoming a value driven investor. If you don't have authentic self-awareness, then you know what? You're only going to do yourself harm and you're not going to do yourself good. So why have you not jumped? That's the big question that Bob and I are asking you. Mm -hmm. And you should be asking yourself. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, okay, Murph, what do you mean jump? What, what does that mean? Like maybe I have jumped and I don't even know it. Or maybe I haven't jumped and I thought I had. Well, have you designed your life? You know, if you go back in the episodes on the podcast, we talk about designing your life. Have you created a plan for the next five years of your life? Yes or no? It's pretty simple. The other thing you can be asking yourself, you know, to define if you've jumped is, have you overcome those mental obstacles forcing you to find excuses? If there's one thing I can tell you in the private community for the value driven investor, we are talking about exactly these things. And there's people in the community that we are talking to that are frustrated because they want to be a value driven investor so bad. They want this life on their terms. They want to find cash flow. They want to do all, get all these benefits that they know are possible because they've seen other people do it. They've seen Bob and I do it. But the problem is, is they cannot get the excuses out of their heads as to why they cannot keep moving forward. We all have been there. Bob and I are, are there too. Entrepreneurs are always there. You're always tired, like, oh man, I'm too busy. Or, oh man, my wife won't let me. Or, oh man, you know, I don't have the money. Or, oh man, it's just too hard. Or, oh man, I'm scared. Or, oh, we all have that. Do you still have that? Are you letting those excuses win? Because if you are, then you haven't jumped. 
Have you started taking action on the plan that you created for yourself? So if you said, yes, I've designed my life and I have a five-year plan and I've literally written it out and I've literally thought about it and I've, I think it's really feasible and I think it's realistic and I've created uh, in my schedule routines and I've added different things in my schedule because Bob and I were talking about it before we even got on today. Like if you're not on my schedule, you're not in my life. Period. The end. And so if you're creating a plan and you're designing your life, then part of that plan has to be how do you fit these new habits, these new routines into your schedule? So have you started doing that? Okay. Those are three things that you have to ask yourself. And if you said yes to all three of those, then I would say, you know what? You've jumped. You've jumped. Yeah. Great. And if you've answered yes to these then I want you guys to go into our Facebook page at Value Driven Investor Facebook page. And I want you to message us and say, yes, I've jumped. And here's where I'm at. Here's what I'm trying to do. Because you know what? You're one of the few. You're our kind of people. And our kind of people are rare. And that's why if you can come into the Value Driven Investor Facebook page and tell us your story and tell us why you think you've jumped and tell us what your game plan is and tell us what you're looking to do, then Bob and I can help you. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're here for. We're here not to talk about us, but to help you guys and to help you guys jump. But if you have not done all these things, if you've only done maybe one of these things, like maybe you have designed your life and maybe you have it in writing and maybe you have started a routine but you still have excuses and you still haven't made progress and you know, you're not making progress. Well, you know what? We also want to hear from you. And the reason why we want to hear from you is because that's what this community is all about. I know that it's scary Murph because at the end of the day, you're looking in the mirror and you're saying, how am I going to make this work? And if I go on this Facebook page and, and I admit and I write on this Facebook page that, you know what? No, I haven't designed my life. No, I am still making excuses. No, you know, I'm not making progress and I know it. Then basically what's so scary about doing that is that you're admitting to our community that you're failing. Mm -hmm. You know what? But the first step to self-awareness is identifying your weaknesses. And you going on a Facebook page, our community Facebook page, is you identifying and, and telling the world on a public platform, I'm not doing what I said I would do. I'm failing myself. I need help. How can you help me? And that's what this is all about. The value driven investor community is all about support. Nobody there that's authentically like Bob and I will ever knock you down for failing. Bob and I have failed more than we could even count. <laughs> so if you're willing to come out there and you're willing to say, yep, I'm failing. I'm not able to make this happen. Here's what's going on. Here's why I think I'm failing. Here's where I'm failing at. Then you know what? You just created self-awareness and you just acknowledged it. And you took one step in the right direction because you know what? Bob and I will jump on there and we will say, hey, man, well, have you thought about doing this? Have you thought about doing that? Have you thought about taking this direction? What about this? What about that? And maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to help other people. And it's a great way to expose yourself to the public forum and to create more self-awareness. You see, that's the whole point of why the Value Driven Investor community. Bob, myself, and the rest of the VDI community are here to help you because we lead by giving. We believe our lives are going to be even better if we can reach out and make a difference in your life. I know you might be thinking this sounds too good to be true and I don't blame you. In this world we live in, there are not many people like Bob and I. There are not many people who lead by giving and are committed to making a positive impact in the world. You don't find a lot of people like that. I know because I haven't found a lot of people like that. The fact is, only time will show that Bob, myself, and everyone else who bring, we bring into this community are here to help each other. Because Bob and I truly believe together, anything is possible. So today we wanna to focus on the moment. The moment that you're caught in where you look in the mirror and you're like, God, I am stuck. I'm not making progress. 
odds are most of you listening to this podcast are stuck. You want to get started, but you have found excuses and you have not made progress. You have taken small action, but changing your life, well, in your mind, that's impossible. You might have written down your plan, started working on your mindset, implemented action into your daily routine, but you are struggling to find your next deal. And for you, that means you're not progressing. Bob, you know just as well as I do, we've both been in this situation. What kind of advice can you give somebody that just feels like they're stuck and they're just not getting where they want to go? They're not making progress. Yeah, it's a, it's a really, it's a hard thing, you know, to go through and, and understand where you're at and, and what you're doing. You know, I, I, am I there every single day? No, because I work on those things to, to get myself out of that with planning and things like that. You know, just recently, you know, this summer, I realized, you know, I have to focus on systems in order to organize my life to to minimize the chaos in my life um, so I can move forward to do the things that I want to do. So I started I came up with a plan. You know, it's like, OK, what do I need to do? OK, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to now live and die by my calendar, which is why we say like, hey, you know, if you're not on the calendar, you don't exist. I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's just like one of those things like my days planned. Everything's planned out. And why I do that now is because I want to minimize the chaos. I want to minimize the distractions because those things let other things creep into your mind. One of the things that I recognize, you know, with um, kind of like the whole, why am I not moving forward in something? And I realize like when you start thinking and you're not planning and you just start kind of being in living in chaos land and you don't have everything kind of well documented and written down to what's your plan is doubt starts to creep in. And as you're, as you were saying all this stuff, I was thinking, what is it, you know, and what is it? And the first thing is, is doubt, you know, and then doubt creates fear. So then fear starts to creep in. And what does that happen? What happens after that is you want to stop or quit. And so it's very easy. Like when, you know, we're doing projects and we hit a hurdle, you know, for like the apartment complex that we're working on, for example, I hit a roadblock. I start thinking, maybe I should just liquidate this to another investor, not even have to deal with it. I don't think I can do this doubt. Then right after that comes fear. I'm like, I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. I don't want to be a failure. I just need to get rid of this thing immediately, which is quit. Right. So as like, that's the process that most people go through. And then when you recognize that process, the first thing you have to do is recognize you're in that process. Self-awareness. Going through that self-awareness. So you go through that whole thing and then you have to remind yourself, what is my plan for my future? Am I willing to keep going and moving forward to that plan? Maybe your plan needs to change. But most of the time, this little process that you go through is self-awareness. And then you remind yourself about the future that you want to go and the path. Because you designed on, your you life, do, right? That's exactly. the key is like, if you don't have that map, then, and you stray off, Dude. off the, off the path, then you don't know how the hell to get back to the path. Exactly. But if you have the path and then you go and pull out your paper and you're like, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. Okay. This still aligns with it. Okay. Then re make the agreement and say, I'm moving forward regardless. This is one of those fear moments. This is one of those doubt moments that's trying to get me to quit. And this is a test. This is a test. So if you're not jumping, you're just being tested because you want to do something down the road and you're telling yourself you want to do that, but the world is going to test you in everything that you do. And it's saying, you want to do it? Okay, step right up. Let's see if you're going to do it. Then you start getting all this pushback because nobody else is going to be out there with you. You're on your own path. You're weaving your own thing. But the good news about us is there's a community now that you can actually be part of that will help you get over those fears and those out. Because we've all been there everybody's been there at different levels. I can help you with something. Murph can help you with something. One of the other people in this group can help you with something. Maybe another member can just help you with it, but it's going through that process that I think is key. And as you're kind of walking through this, I was just writing down my whole thought process and the whole thing going, it's doubt plus fear equals stop or quit. And then you got to have self-awareness. You got to remind yourself and agree to move forward. That's a very simple process, you know, but reinforcing it with the community is the key. You know, and grand routine, like you said, the schedule, right? Like mm -hmm. routine. I mean, you and I, it's hard for you to just try to call me or it's hard for me to call oh. you because 
we are so <laughs> committed to our schedules. Like, Oh my God. You know, and it's even text messages. Like I'll text you and I know I probably won't hear back. And if I don't hear back, it's cause well, Bob's a swamp. Bob's at the fire department, you know, whatever it might yeah. be. And, and I appreciate that because I think the routine is life on your terms. Bob has created yeah. a schedule that he loves and he yeah. wakes up every day and he can't wait to get going and he's fired up for his day and he knows exactly what that day is going to consist of. And that's mm -hmm. life on your terms, you guys. Now yeah. there's going to be struggle in there, just like Bob's struggling with the, the apartment complex. Bob knew he would struggle with the apartment complex. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that he's self-aware enough to identify when doubt creeps in when fear is about to take over and he counteracts that with his thought process. And that's I, I mindset. We're going to talk about mindset all the time on this podcast mm -hmm. forever, because if there's one thing that you always have to work on, Bob and I and and Jeff Bezos <laughs> and Elon Musk. Yeah, it's mindset. That is a so never true. ending process. So you guys routine takes away the demons because routine gets you away from losing focus and thinking about things that you shouldn't be thinking about because you just keep moving. Routine gives you the feeling of progress and progress creates positivity. Whether it's progress, oh, I ran into a roadblock. Well, then you know what? It's progress because you're going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Whether it's progress that, hey, you know what? I don't know how I'm going to make this happen, but I got to change my mindset. And all of a sudden you feel like you've changed your mindset. And that can be Bob and I working out on a regular basis every single day. That's mindset. We are work out because we feel good. When you feel good, you look good. When you look good, you do good things and you have a positive mindset. Like mm -hmm. these things are not like we're not changing the world by telling you all this. But the reason that we're doing this podcast about stuck, the reason we're talking about things that you could be sitting there going, well, like you're not really telling me anything I don't know. Yeah, but I'm telling you what you need to hear right now. And that's the beauty of what Bob and I want to put together with this community. What you need right now if you're stuck, because we're in the survival phase. The podcast is in the survival phase. We aren't talking about investing or thriving or legacy. We're talking about surviving because this podcast just got started. This community is just about to get started. And at the beginning, the beginning is the hardest. And I know that there's plenty of you out there that feel stuck. There's plenty of you out there that are probably doing some deals. Yeah. Find, trying to find deals just like Bob and I, but there's days where Bob and I still feel stuck because I'm trying to find a new deal and all of a sudden there's a hundred other people and I can't find as many deals as I could find. I'm trying to do commercial business and find commercial deals in both industrial and multifamily and I'm feeling like, man, I don't know if it's even possible because there's so much competition. There's so many people out there with way more money, way more funds. They've been doing it a lot longer than me. I feel stuck when it comes to commercial. So yeah. you're not alone. Every time you try to move up, break the glass ceiling, there's going to be moments where you feel stuck. Bob and I can relate with that. Wouldn't you agree, Bob? I mean, no. like yeah. at the end of the day, what give some pointers because you're really good at this. I mean, you know, you're a firefighter. I mean, literally, like when we talk stuck, I mean, Bob's probably been in a situation in a fire where it's like stuck almost life or death, yeah. you know, and he's a, he's a paramedic. Talk about stuck, like, he, he probably came across somebody that was in a really bad situation health wise. And he was like, man, I don't know if I know how to solve this problem. But the thing about Bob that, that you can never deny is the man never quits and he never lets fear take over where he's going. So Bob, I mean, I think you're one of the best people to help people get through this. I'm stuck phase. Yeah. I've actually been afraid for my life inside of a fire and wondering if I was going to get out, you know, but, um, and that, is probably the, the worst thing you could ever have happen to you when you've got like a situation where you've got smoke down to the floor, it's getting blacker and blacker and blacker. And it's like, uh, I would say like a, you hear the almost like in your brain, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, oh, because it's getting hotter. The smoke's getting darker. You're sitting there and you know, when heat gets to X level and smoke gets to here, this whole thing's going to go up. And if I'm inside of it, I go up with it. So you're trying to race to get to a position where you know. And so what it what it comes down to is your training. 
and, and basing it off of your knowledge, your expertise, and your training. Like I know, like when I see those situations, they're building up in my head inside of a fire. You know, I know that because I have the experience of 25 years of working in the fire service where a new person might not even be aware it's going on and they're just blindly following me in to a fire, right? So, and, and the whole goal there is to realize and do the calculation, can I get to the actual fire and spray it out before this thing blows up on me? And, and that's exactly what you're going through. And it goes, through the, goes back to the fact of knowing the factors, know, having the training, having the knowledge, the understanding and everything that you get you know, through years of being in the fire service, which is a community of teachers who teach you how to look at these situations. You don't learn it in your first three month fire academy. You don't learn it there, you know? You're in the survival phase of the fire service for the first three, four, five years of your life, learning everything that you can, so that way you can save yourself. I don't let a new person go into a fire and be like, hey, just go over there and take care of that. It's like, nope, you're right here with me. If I can't find you, that's a bad problem. That's not gonna work. If I'm with another guy who's been on the job 20 years, hey, go over there, do that. I'm gonna go over here and do this. Why? Because he knows the exact same situation as me. You know, that's just the experience through the years of a community helping you build and helping you understand, you know, what are the factors that you need to know so you can get over that fear. And that fear, like in that situation where you're sitting there in like a fire like that, it creeps in quick. And a lot of times you're like, I just want to run out of here. You know, it's like the smart thing to do is run away from fire. And it's like, you have to understand, like, how do they train all these firefighters to run into fire? And it's because it'll, they give people enough training to overcome that fear. That you're not really afraid of fire because you understand the factors that go into it. It's the same thing with real estate investing. When you tie it back into it, I was afraid to buy my first investment property. I was like, oh, we're going to be gone. My brother and I are looking at this place. It was $100,000 up in Oak Ridge, Oregon, a little tiny town. We're like, what if it goes bad, this and that? Like, oh, gosh, oh, God, I'm so nervous. I don't know if I want to flip. Now it's like we have, you know, six, seven projects going, and they're stacked deep because he's, like, locking stuff up like a madman. You know, we're doing a 16-unit apartment complex. We're going to do some new construction builds. Like, there's fear with all that, but the training, the education development has come with it, and so we're growing with that. So the, all those levels have fear. It's just like that, you know, tying it back into the fire service, same thing. You know, I feel that fear, but I just have the training, education, development to get over it every single time and know when I'm supposed to do something and when I'm not. Bob, I mean, that was an awesome story. Like, honestly, I kind of got chills when you tell me about the fire (laughs) because I just I don't even know if I could imagine myself in a fire situation like that. I really want to hear it from you because I feel like I've kind of been the, you know, I'm the big cheerleader for the value driven investor community, but I I, I want people to hear it from you because I know that you are as passionate about this as me. Um, What, when we open the doors, which we don't know exactly when that's going to be, but when we open the doors to the value driven investor community, like what does it mean to you? Cause I think people understand what it means to me. And if they don't yet, they're going to know what it means yeah. to me, but what does it mean to you to be a part of like what we're really trying to start here? Because I know one thing, it doesn't mean you get to make a bunch of money. Cause really that's the thing with both of us. When we started this is like, this isn't about the money. Yeah. Like, sure. We're going to need money to make it better and bigger. And we're going to need the money uh, to be able to impact more people's lives and, right. and to have the support that it takes to, do the podcast and all the content and everything that we want to do in our vision and have like these big seminars and, and whatever it takes, you know, really at the end of the day, and maybe we won't even have seminars because you and I usually like to do things differently, but yeah, it takes money to do things that impact people's lives. But really that's not why we're doing it, but I want the people to know why, why you're doing it and what it means to you. Like when we open these doors and people come in and they got questions and they need help and they want, they want someone to, to, to lean on, like, what does it mean to you? Yeah, it's, that's actually a really good question. And for me, you know, it's it's legacy of giving back, I think. Like, it's most important to me. It's like, I think everybody can be successful. And I think people just need help. Like, I've needed help multiple times in my life, you know, when that fear sets in. I've needed help when I was a brand new firefighter to get to the level where I was at. I help other people get to that same level. And I think what I find, what's really bothered me or really pissed me off like in the investing industry and the real estate industry when you want that help and you look for that help you've got to pay a crazy ass price for it 
And then you find out a lot of times that the help maybe wasn't that good or the information wasn't that great. And you just paid a bunch of money. I mean, I paid over, when I was a real estate agent, I probably spent over $30,000 on coaching programs. Well, there's, there's like, programs out there right now because I've been doing some re research. $15,000, yeah. dollars $45,000 up front and you can be part of our program. Like what? To teach you these, to teach you principles that are free when it really comes down to you're growing at a different level and you need somebody to encourage you, to help you, to keep pushing you along, to get over those doubt and those fear moments to let you know it's okay. I've been there. I've seen that when you, you, you probably need more mentorship because everybody, you know, there's processes that everybody does and everything's pretty much the same in the investing industry. You look at things very similar, you know, but you just have to learn those things. And so it just, that's like the thing that really bothered me. And that's why I'm here like with you, because I see a huge opportunity in this community to grow like I've grown in the fire service where you can take people, you can mentor them, they can start out that bare bones level and you can help them grow to be super successful and then we can start partnering and doing deals right alongside each other. And I think that would be amazing, you know, if like you can help somebody go from working a nine to five job or whatever it is in their life and then they can take it and be like, I'm here, I'm afraid to jump. Okay, I jumped, now I'm doing this. And then in five years go, I'm so glad I did this. I'm never looking back at the life I had before. This plan's amazing. Thank you so much. That'd be the greatest gift in the world to me. Um, and, and that's truly why I'm here. I'm getting chills just thinking about that. You know, like if somebody were to ever tell me that, that'd be a life altering moment for me. So that, that's why I'm here, man. So. That's awesome, dude. And, and yeah. that's exactly why I'm here. I mean, you summed it up perfectly. Um, because, you know, I got a couple people that I'm mentoring right now. I've, I've helped a couple people kind of jump and get off the yeah. you know get out of the 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 stuck phase um because they knew that they had their jumping partner which is me that was going to pull the shoot and make sure that we landed and we didn't die you know and just yeah. like you a fire captain your guy your your ear rookie fng that's walking into a fire with you they know that as long as i stay by bob i'm going to be safe yeah. and that's really what this community is about it's about like bob and i are not out here to try to take advantage of anybody yeah, we're going to charge for what we do, but we feel like whatever that number will be when we open the doors, it's going to be a fair and it's going to yeah. be fair. And the, the funds that we're going to, we're going to get are going to also help grow the community and provide resources and do things that I don't know the Bob and I probably haven't even thought of, but yeah. we're always going to be fair. There's no way that I will ever charge $45,000 for anything because I yeah. just feel like that is just what that is, is that somebody taking advantage of your fear. Someone, somebody taking advantage of you being stuck and you not believing enough in yourself that you think, oh, maybe I can buy success. You can't buy success. No. Success is hard work. It's never quit. It's a plan. It's everything that we talked about. But you know what? Our community can help you. And the people in this community that we will allow into our community will have to come into the community with the mindset of, I want to help people. Just like Bob said, I'm in here because I want to grow, but I'm also in here because I want to give back because giving back, if there's anything I've learned in life, you know, Bob has impact club and I have team sugar Shea, which is for type one diabetes. And you know, Bob has impact club, which is raising money for all kinds of charities. Like that just opened my eyes to what it means to help other people, which helps you. And that's what this is all about, man. Cause Bob and I could have sat on our soapbox and, and we could have just been like, Hey dude, let's just be like every other real estate investor. That's pretty damn successful and just keep it to ourselves, And let's right. just, you know, keep making money. Like let's just keep living on our terms. Like why share it? Like, let's take it for ourselves. But that's why I tell you that Bob and I are different than everybody else. That's not how we look at True. life. Yeah. That's not, that's not our purpose in life. And, uh, and we're damn excited to, just be thinking about opening up the doors to this community. And we hope that whoever's listening here, if you're stuck, if you're not stuck, if you just want to be around some good people who want to do the right thing, then you know what? Keep paying attention. Get on our email list. Go to vdipodcast.com. Sign up to get notifications for when the new podcast episodes come up. You also get emails that we're putting together. I mean, all this content. We have all this content on our back end team that's going to start coming out and it's going to be all about helping you. Yeah. All about providing you resources. And, and the whole intent is, Bob summed it up. The whole intent is 
And you will only know this over the course of time because <laughs> it pisses me off too. There's so many people out here taking advantage of this situation and the situation that people are in and, and, the, and the, the credibility that real estate investing and how it can change your life has. There's a lot of credibility to that and people know that, mm -hmm. but they don't know who to trust to get through yeah. into that process. And that pisses me off just like it pisses Bob off. And this community is a stand, we're making a stand, okay? It's never gonna be free because yeah. there's nothing, there's no such thing as free in life. And you know what, we can't build something amazing if we're not bringing in any dollars. But I promise you this, and I, I know Bob's got my back on it. There's no way in hell and if we, if I even say it once, Bob's gonna punch me in the face. There's no way in <laughs> hell we're ever gonna charge forty-five grand for anything. <laughs> That's insane. No way in hell would that ever happen. Nope. If you do tell me that, I will punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and I deserve it, man. And it yeah. won't ever happen. So you know what, guys? This is uh, this is our stuck podcast That's because cool. at this point in the podcast, in the survival phase, we are still in the very beginning. We are still trying to figure out how do we make this happen and you're stuck and I get it or you're not making the progress you want to make. I get it. Go to our Facebook page. Tell us your story. Message us. Tell us how you think you're making progress. But if you're not making progress, then be self-aware enough to tell us why you're failing. Because failure truly for an entrepreneur, for someone that's successful, failure truly is the next step to success. So we'll catch you guys on the next yeah. podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Good news. The Value Driven Investor Community opens to founding members on September 15th. Early access to half-off memberships will be available for two weeks only. The VDI community means access. Access to driven and passionate members. Access to workshops that fast-track your investment knowledge. And direct access to Tim Murphy, Bob Grant, and other experts that will answer your questions and guide you through the process of your personal investment opportunities. What does living life on your terms mean to you. The Value Driven Investor Community will take you one step closer to that dream. Apply at valuedriveninvestor.com. The Value Driven Investor Podcast was produced by Digital Legend Media in Minneapolis. Build your legend, digitallegendmedia.com.